Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. Today, we're going to be assessing some more teaching from Kevin Zadai. But before we get to that assessment, if you want to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. All right, so the topic of this video from Kevin Zadai has to do with healing, physical healing from God, and he is going to talk about how you can accelerate your healing. So let's get to our assessment. All right, guys, let's get right to it. Thoughts are on that. Yeah. Um, the way that you can receive healing faster is 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 to be humble, to humble yourself, and then... Okay, so already I have to ask the question, where is that taught in Scripture? Certainly it is a good thing for us to have humility, but there is no passage in Scripture that says that if I humble myself, that I am guaranteed physical healing, and especially that it's going to accelerate that healing. So Kevin Zadai is teaching, but he is not teaching out of the Bible. He is teaching his own opinion at this point. I have this conversation with the Lord, which... Because I've I've had you know people wouldn't even believe this, but I have been sick to where I felt like I was going to die. And I okay, so pay attention to that he said he's been sick to the point he felt like he was going to die. I never told anybody. I told my wife afterwards. I've gone through things, and I said, "Oh no, that's not going to happen." Mm. And I said, "No, this is not going to happen." And I I had to stay up you know with I had to stay up all night to not get something. Okay, so which is it? He said he's been so sick he was about to die, and then he said he stayed up all night so that he wouldn't get something. Friends, you either have something or you don't have something. And this kind of reminds me of a common practice within um, the Word of Faith movement. Uh, I I don't know uh, how Kevin Zadai feels about this, but I want to bring it up anyways because Kevin Zadai is certainly within the Word of Faith movement. And one of the common teachings that you will hear there is they will tell people if you are... Um, not feeling well, don't say, I am sick. Just keep declaring your healing. So you walk around and actually say positive things like, I am well. I feel great. Friends, just think about that, though. One of the Ten Commandments has to do with telling the truth, right? We're not supposed to lie. We're not supposed to bear false witness. If you are walking around and you have a fever and you're saying, I feel great, I am well, and that is not lining up with reality, you are actually lying. So with Kevin Zadai, though, in his story, it doesn't make sense because on one hand, he's like, I've been so sick, I almost died. And then he's like, well, no, I stayed up all night so that I didn't get sick. Wh which one is it? But, but... If I hadn't stayed up all night and said, oh, no, we're not going there, yeah. we, I, would, I would have gotten it. But I've never gotten that foul disease that's going around. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you that there are at least two different times where if I would have just thrown myself to randomness or, or had not responded, that I, w I would have gotten that. I, I intentionally did not get it. Okay, so to speed it up, I, you have to turn yourself in. I, I don't claim to have a lot of faith. I, I claim to know a God who is a faith God who has faith in me. Okay, we have got a huge problem here. So Kevin Zadai just said that God has faith in him. And, and I'm going to let him finish this next statement too, and then we're going to look at this. He has enough faith in me that he lives inside of me. So I turn. Okay, so there it is. God has so much faith in Kevin Zadai that he lives inside of him. Friends, I can't even begin to describe how unbiblical that statement is. In, in reality, it's really turning the gospel upside down on its head because the gospel is that we are saved by grace through faith and grace is unmerited favor. It is something you do not deserve. So if you are a true Christian and the Holy Spirit indeed does indwell you, it is not because God had faith in you, looked at you and said, wow, that's someone who's really going to steward my spirit well. That's, that's somebody who has a lot of potential or someone who is really great. No, friends, the only reason you have it is because of God's grace and his mercy. In fact, let's look at um, one passage here. This is Jesus speaking, and uh, this is from John chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. 
Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. So Jesus saw people who believed in him and said he wouldn't entrust himself to them. He, he, he knows about man's condition, that we are totally depraved, that we are born dead in trespasses and sin, and that we need the uh, regeneration that only God can provide. And so it is not like Kevin Zadai says. I mean, friends, to me, this is blasphemous to say that God looks at us and has faith in us. Remember, we are saved by grace through faith. We place our faith in God. God does not look at us and think that we are so impressive or that we have the best potential, um, a lot of possibilities ahead of us. It is nothing like that. We are saved simply by the grace of God. And if somebody does have the Holy Spirit, that's the only reason they have it. This is a humongous error in teaching. I myself in, and I. this is what I tell them. I go, you know what? I go, if I get sick, I just want you to know it's not because of me. Okay, so now let's pay attention to this. Kevin Zadai said that when he talks to God, he says, I want you to know that if I get sick, it's not because of me. So it's not going to be because of something that I've done that I would get sick. Now, let's continue listening to him. That's what I say. I say because I'll stay up all night and Kathy knows I have. I go, oh, no, we're not going there. I got a lot to do tomorrow. And, and we stayed, we, we've stayed up at least, and <laughs> that's all I'm going to say, we've stayed up at least uh, two different nights in, the, in this year and refused, refused it. And we turned ourselves in, and I say this, listen, listen Lord, I feel like I'm going to die. And I said, this is from the pit of hell. And I said, I would gladly come to be with you, but I am not going to go by some foul disease, Amen. some devil's disease. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not going that way. And I turn myself in. I say, listen, whatever it is that I have done to make myself vulnerable with this, I repent of it. Show me what to do. And immediately. Okay, so did you notice, though, he said now that he speaks to God and he says, God, whatever I did to bring this about. He just said a second ago that he speaks to God and says, God, I just need you to know that I'm not the one who is going to uh, bring about this sickness. But now he's saying that he prays to God and says, God, help me to see what I've done so that I can repent of my sin, because obviously I have done something to allow this sickness in my life. So he is contradicting himself once again. But I really also want to pause for a second. And here's my heart behind doing this particular video. Um, Kevin Zadai has made it very clear with that last statement that he connects any sort of sickness that he might, or if he's not feeling well, however he would word it, in his life, he connects that with the fact that he has done something that has allowed that to come about. So there is some sin in his life of which uh, I guess he needs to seek repentance. Uh, and so what does a person listening to this do? They go, okay, so obviously if I am getting sick, it must be because of my sin. It must be because I have done something. Now, friends, we can say that all sin, um, or, or excuse me, all sickness is a result of sin generally, resulting from the fall in the Garden of Eden, but not every individual sickness that comes about is because of sin. I think about when Jesus talks um, about, you know, the uh, Tower of Siloam that fell on people. And he said, do you think it was because they were worse sinners than others? No, it wasn't because they, they did something. Or I think about um, when Jesus was asked about the blind man he, and uh, the disciples said, you know, Jesus, who sinned? Was it this man or was it his parents? Who sinned that he was born this way? And Jesus says, Neither. It wasn't because of some personal sin that was committed. But when Kevin Zadai says this sort of thing, now people are going to think, okay, I am sick because of some personal sin that I have committed. And now, I don't know, you could say either I've opened myself up to the demonic or God's punishing me. You know, this is where people's minds will go. And so now you were confronted with the fact that the suffering that you are facing in your life is your fault. And Kevin Zadai makes it seem like if you just humble yourself and you really stand stand strong in your faith, that, that thing will go away from you. Well, friends, 
Here's my plea to you. If you listen to Kevin Zadai, I just ask you to be honest with yourself, okay? What Kevin Zadai is explaining here, has that been your experience in your life? I am not denying the fact that God heals people or can do a miracle, but would you say that you just live a life of perfect health and that you never, ever, ever get sick, and if you start to feel bad, that you just can can speak that thing away? I venture to say that is not your experience, and if that is not your experience, then that should tell you something about the quality of this teaching, and let me tell you, it's not a quality teaching. What he is saying is very unbiblical, and it breaks my heart that many people are putting this burden upon themselves because they think it's their fault that they get sick, or they think it's their fault that they don't get their healing, and that's uh, who I really want to reach in this. So if you feel that burden, if you have been like, what is wrong with me? Why am I getting sick or why am I not receiving my healing? What am I not doing correctly? Friends, know that what you are hearing from Kevin Zadai is not sound biblical teaching. Okay, We trust in God. Suffering is a part of the Christian walk. Certainly, as I said, God can heal people and God does heal people. And he will do so when it is in accordance with his sovereign will. All right, let's continue. Immediately, he says, okay, this is what I want you to do. And he says, okay, go and drink this. Go do this right now. And uh, he said, and, starts, and start getting yourself to sweat. And it's, it, it literally is overthrown because I turn myself in. I don't go after it like with... So if it's overthrown because he turned himself in, again, what is the connection people are going to make? So if mine wasn't overturned, I guess I just wasn't fully submitted enough. I didn't turn myself in enough. This places all the blame on the individual. Great faith and say, you know, by his stripes I'm healed. You know, I already know that by, he took his stripes on, yeah. on his back and I already know I'm healed. All right, so let's, let's end right there. So of course that's a reference to... Uh, Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. I just want to talk about this. So let's look at the New Testament and how the New Testament quotes this verse, the same verse from Isaiah 53. I'm not putting it up there. I assume that you know it. But if we look here, 1 Peter 2, 24, speaking of Jesus, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. What is the context here? It's about Jesus bearing our sins that we might die to sin by his wounds we have been healed that is what frees us up to live a life of holiness now i would also point out that there is a sense in which you can say that jesus on the cross absolutely did uh, pay for our healing so we will one day have glorified bodies that will have no pain, no sickness, none of the ailments that afflict us right now. But friends, that will take place in eternity. So just as I said, he paid the price for our glorified bodies. Do we have the glorified bodies now? No, but the price has already been paid. It's the same when you talk about our healing. God can and does heal now, but there is no guarantee that we are going to get our healing, that we are going to walk in perfect health. That's why there's plenty of examples uh, in the New Testament with Paul, not only his thorn in the flesh, but in the book of Galatians. He talks about preaching uh, the gospel to the Galatians because of an ailment. In fact, let's see if we can find that real quick. I'm pretty sure that's Galatians chapter 4. Oh, I hope I can figure this out quick. Let's see if we can figure it here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Verse 13. You know it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first. So Paul is saying he preached the gospel to the church in Galatia with a bodily ailment. He was sick. We also have the example of Trophimus being left sick in Miletus, Epaphroditus being sick, Paul telling Timothy to drink a little bit of wine. We see numerous times in the New Testament that people who are apostles or very strong believers are sick and they are not always healed. And so this teaching from Kevin Zadai, as I said before, I'm just really concerned the impact that it will have on people. If you start to believe that it is always God's will to heal you, or you believe that you can just uh, stand against something, you know, humble yourself, pray against something, and it will definitely go away, you are setting yourself up for massive failure. And I, I, I just believe there is going to be somebody who watches this video, and that has been your experience that it has not worked that way. And I want you to know it's because Kevin Zadai is twisting scripture or he's just teaching things that aren't 
even in scripture whatsoever. He's providing his own teaching that does not line up with sound doctrine. Friends, this is standard fare for Kevin Zadai. He is not somebody who rightly handles God's words, and therefore he is somebody to be avoided in ministry. Okay, guys, I hope this video is helpful to you. If it is helpful and you want to help get this content out to more people here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, God bless.